All right, this is John White, Breaking Mad, talking about how to make nitroethane into uh, methylamine. Now, I already did a video on how to make methylamine from hexamine. I also did a video on how to make uh, it from nitromethane doing a uh, hydrogenation. And the way you got the nitromethane was the same way here. You get it from the RC... Uh, radio controlled fuel. Uh, they use uh, nitromethane and methanol is mainly what the fuel is it consists of. So anyways you got your nitro group the R would be a methyl group in our case and you're gonna add two electrons and two protons and remove a water right you're gonna add two protons here and this is gonna come off and you'll end up with this now instead of it being positive it's negative right and that's called a nitroso group, right? Nitroso. Then you take that and you do the same thing again. You add two electrons and two protons. Only this time you're not making any water. And you make this N substituted hydroxylamine, right? Hydroxylamine. Uh, then you take that and basically you do the same thing again. You add two electrons, two protons. And again, like up in the first part, you're going to remove a water molecule. This is your water molecule, right? You add two, two hydrogens, two protons. One goes to the amine group, one goes to the water group. The water group leaves, and now you have an NH2 here. So now you have your methylamine. Of course, this is all done with protons in solution, so, you know, most likely in my example here, I'm using hydrochloric acid, so this will turn into the salt. of methyl ammonium chloride or methylamine hydrochloride. So that's the mechanism or generic mechanism. I didn't really get into it too much. So where do these electrons come from? They come from metal, okay? In our case, we're gonna use iron, okay? Uh, every example I've ever seen of them talking about alkyl nitroalkanes they're always using iron as the metal and acetic acid as the acid, okay? Because the protons come from an acid. Now, I've seen other metals like tin, zinc, iron used in aryl, you know, nitroaryl compounds, you know, where the nitro group is connected to a benzene ring. <coughs> uh, and they use usually uh, hydrochloric acid, okay? Like I said, I've never done this reaction. A lot of this from now on, the mechanism is okay, but what I'm going to go over from now on is all guesswork. Okay, I didn't, I'm not getting it from anywhere because I haven't found anyone that had this, you know, I haven't found the instructions for this from anyone, anywhere. <coughs> so anyways, it's a lot of guesswork. So keep that in mind. I've never done this. I'm just guessing from here on in. Okay, here's, here's the equation for it. You got... Uh, your one mole of nitro group, one mole of nitro compound, uh, six electrons, six protons, and you make your methylamine uh, and, and two waters. Now, like I said, I don't know if you can use other metals. I'm only assuming you can use tin and zinc because you can when you have nitrobenzene to make aniline. Okay. I don't know if it works on an alkyl group but I would suspect that it does. I don't see why it would not. The same with the acid. It's always been acetic acid in all, you know, they always give you that same exact sentence, you know, boil your nitroalkane in uh, iron and acetic acid and, you know, you got your amine. It's that simple. But that, they don't give you any instructions or anything. I don't see why you can't use hydrochloric acid. Um, but keep that in mind. If you if you try this method that I'm about to go over and it doesn't work or doesn't work good, maybe replace the metal with iron and replace the acid with acetic acid. Okay? These are molar amounts, by the way, over here. Folks, yeah, that one too. Um, now, in my example, I'm going to use one mole of nitromethane, which is 53.68 milliliters. I'm going to use concentrated hydrochloric acid or whatever they have at the 
hardware store, which is usually 32, 32 and a half percent. And that's usually about uh, 100 milliliters is l l like a mole, maybe a mole and slightly more than a mole, but it's close to a mole. <coughs> uh, so I'm going to use a mole and a half. Now, why am I going to use a mole and a half when it says I should use six moles of protons? Because there's water in solution, okay? Uh, 150 milliliters, you know, about 100 of that is is uh, water. You know, only about 50 milliliters of that is hydro hydro hydrogen chloride. You know what I'm saying? And when this hydrogen chloride reacts, uh, you know, with the metal, it's going to make a metal chloride. So in solution, there will be chloride ions. And since there's all this water, there's also going to be protons. So if you don't use, like I'm only using... Uh, one and a half moles instead of six moles. Well, when that one and a half moles is done being used in solution, it's going to react with this metal and, and make some, uh, say, zinc chloride or iron chloride. So there will be chloride ions in solution even after these a lot of chloride ions, even after these a, after the acid is used up, right? <laughs> and there will be protons because of auto, you know, water auto ionizes, you know, self ionizes. And there will always be protons in solution. And with the chloride ions, that means there's HCO in solution. Even when this is gone, there's still some hydrochloric acid left. So you don't need to put 600 milliliters or 6 moles of HCL in there. It's unnecessary, at least in my opinion. Uh, now, the, the metal, each metal atom will give up two electrons. And you need six electrons in this reaction. So that means you need three atoms of metal to you know because they each give two electrons so that's six I mean two times three is six right so I'd need three moles I didn't use tin over here and figure it out because tin is so geez you'd have to put 300 and you know 55 or whatever uh, grams in there that's too much so I figured it out for zinc and iron <coughs> uh, zinc was I don't know 197 grams or something 196 this was also slightly under you know because here's the molar weights, 55 and 65. I times them by three, and then I added like three grams just so I had even numbers, just so I was slightly above, you know, three moles, okay? So this is your setup. <coughs> you know, you're going to set up for reflux, and uh, you're going to have a thermometer down here so you can, you know what temperature your pot is at. And you're going to put your acid in here, you're going to put your metal and your nitro group in the flask here, the bottom flask. You're going to stir it up. You got to have, you have to have stirring, okay? Lots of vigorous stirring or you will get a bad yield, that's for sure. <coughs> and then you just start dripping your acid in, okay? You got your condenser here just in case. It's not really needed, but you're going to reflux after this, so you might as well have it there ready. And you start dripping it in. This is very exothermic, okay? Well, not very. It's exothermic. <coughs> so when you drip it in, you want, and that's why you have your thermometer down here, you want to keep the temperature between about 80 and 90 C, okay? So you just keep dripping it in, dripping it in, you know. Don't drip it in super fast. You don't want it to take off. And, you know, you have a runaway reaction. Um, and have a nice, cool, you know, water bath that you can put on it you know you're not going to need any heat during this part of it while you're adding this acid <coughs> if you want it to be hotter you add more acid if you want it to be cooler you stop adding acid if you want it to be even colder than that you give it a cool cool water bath and that's basically all you do you drip it in and when you're done dripping it in you take off your your equalizing funnel up here right you take it off and you just start refluxing reflux at 30 to 60 minutes you know, I would say 30, but since I've never done the reaction before, you know, it might be 60. You know, I, d I wouldn't do it more than 60, that's for sure. <coughs> and that's it, you're done. Now you have your methylamine hydrochloride. The only problem is, is you got all this salt, all these salts in there too. All right, before I go on to what you do after, you know, you get it, this all done, I wanted to bring up a couple things. One is you need an equalizing funnel here, not a separatory funnel. Number two is the iron or the zinc or whatever you use, you don't have to add it all at once. 
you can add it in three, you know, batches. You know, like I need 200 grams of zinc to do this experiment the way I described it. I could add uh, 60 grams in at first, and then after a third of the acid is added, add another 70 grams, and then after two thirds of the acid is added, add another 70 grams, and then add the last third of acid, and the reaction will be over. You don't have to, if your stir bar isn't, or your mechanical stir isn't strong enough to stir that much metal, and, and also the metal needs to be powder. Don't be throwing nails in and expect something to happen. And also remember, when you're doing that, like if you take out, you know, the cap and you want to add some more metal, you are making hydrogen, which is explosive. So keep that in mind, too, that, you know, if you're, you know, you don't want to use a, uh, hydrogen at least will go up, up and not down. But you don't want to use any flames. And if you can put a cap on top you know, and have a hose leading from that cap to outside or another room where there is no flames or sparks or electricity or anything like that that can blow up. And also I wanted to add that if you use iron, and that's why I wanted to try to use zinc, is because if you use iron, you need to use a mechanical stir. If you use a ma uh, magnetic stir, uh, the stir bar is a magnet, and it'll just all the iron will just cling to the stir bar you know what i mean it won't go through solution okay now what do you do after you're done uh, you add some sodium hydroxide until it's a until it's all alkaline and by alkaline i mean 9 to 12 ph all right and if you go higher you know you get to 12 ph that's good you just want to make sure and let it stir you know what i mean let it stir shake it up you want to make sure all the methylamine hydrochloride is free based and then now it's just methylamine okay now a lot of stuff is going to precip out now you're adding the sodium hydroxide little by little and then checking the ph you know what i mean until it gets to 9 to 12 i mean if it's good if it's for 14 that's good too whatever just so it's alkaline you want to dissolve that sodium hydroxide in some water first you know what i mean dissolve it all up and then add it little bit by little bit and I want you to see what's going on. You got, this is what you started out with. You did your reaction. Now you got methylamine hydrochloride. And you got iron chloride and water. Now we just added free base. I mean, we just free base. So we added sodium hydroxide. Now that will react with this to make, to free base it to the amine instead of the salt. Uh, the Hydroxide will go to the iron and the chloride will go to the sodium chloride to make sodium chloride and iron hydroxide. Iron usually transition hydroxide, tr transition metal hydroxides are not soluble in water or very slightly soluble. Uh, so that's the precip, right? And the water is holding a lot of sodium chloride and your free base methylamine should be floating on top. The next is add a little bit of nonpolar solvent in there. Some kind of like benzene or, uh, you know, toluene or something. But I'd want it to be uh, less dense than water so it floats on top, okay? And that's what I mean by nonpolar solvent. It'll form two, two distinct layers if you put it in water. The reason why is because the methylamine is a gas, you know what I mean? I mean, it's a liquid while it's in the solvent, but it wants to be a gas at room temperature. So it's going to try to escape the liquid, and if you have some nonpolar solvent on top, it'll act like a blanket, you know what I mean, and kind of trap in the methylamine and, you know, absorb it. So anyways, and you just want to put a little bit of nonpolar solvent, just so there's like a little hairline of solvent floating on top, you know what I mean? So you have a little couple millimeters of uh, blanket there. So anyways, you cover it up, put a cap on it, let it sit in the freezer. And I mean freezer, not refrigerator. Uh, you know, let it cool down. Like I said, methylamine wants to evaporate and be a gas. So the cooler you have it, the more it soluble it is in whatever it's in. <clears throat> and basically, just let it sit in the freezer until all those solids, all those that iron hydroxide, uh, you know, sinks to the bottom, right? Then decant off the liquid. Now you have your decanted liquid and you have your solids sitting at the bottom there. Don't miss part two.